Hello and welcome. I'm your host Aditi Singh and you're watching My India. India is increasingly focusing on the global south to enhance socio-economic engagement and foster mutually beneficial partnerships with developing nations. This strategy aims to position India as a leader among emerging economies, leveraging its historical ties and shared challenges with countries in Africa, Latin America and Asia. Recently, Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness visited India, highlighting this commitment. Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness engaged in bilateral talks with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. Both leaders expressed their commitment to ushering in a new era of collaboration, strengthening ties across various sectors. Prime Minister Modi emphasized the rich tapestry of shared history and cultural connections between India and Jamaica, highlighting their common interests in cricket, the Commonwealth, and the Caribbean community. In a significant move, Holness expressed his interest in joining the Global Biofuel Alliance, an initiative spearheaded by India during its G20 presidency, aimed at promoting biofuels as a key component of the global energy transition. India has been the vocal voice for the global south. And uh, uh, many of the development challenges that countries like Jamaica have are challenges that uh, India currently face or would have developed the roadmap to conquering those problems. Uh, and so India provides for countries like Jamaica uh, the pathway for development, uh, both in terms of the technology and in terms of the management and skills to overcome development challenges. Through initiatives like the International Solar Alliance and collaborations in sectors such as renewable energy, technology transfer, and sustainable development, India aims to provide support that aligns with the needs of Africa. The emphasis on mutual growth is evident in India's foreign aid programs, which prioritize infrastructure development, healthcare, and education in partner countries. Four C's हमारे संबंधों को अंकित करते हैं कल्चर क्रिकेट कॉमनवेल्थ और कैरिकॉम आज की बैठक में हमने सभी क्षेत्रों में अपना सहयोग सुदृढ़ करने पर विचार किया और कई नए इनिशिएटिव्स की पहचान की during its G20 presidency last year, India welcomed the African Union's chairperson, Azalea Sumani, to the G20 leaders' table, making the African Union the second regional bloc to join after the EU. This inclusion, driven by India's initiative, aims to enhance the G20's effectiveness. India is also advocating for reforms in international institutions to better represent the global south ensuring these nations have a stronger voice in global governance. That this inclusion of African Union is one of the most significant steps G20 has taken. It's a large group of you know, 55 countries and it's one of the most important regional organizations in the world. If European Union can be member, why not African Union? And it has, you know, once you connect yourself to African Union, you connect yourself to several countries of East, South, West, North Africa. And they are a very large number. And if you want to kind of have inclusive democratic decision making and governance, then African Union is a must. By strengthening economic ties through trade agreements and investments, India seeks to create a more balanced and equitable global economic landscape. This approach bolsters India's geopolitical standing and contributes to sustainable development in the Global South, fostering stability and prosperity in a rapidly changing world. India's biotechnology sector is undergoing a significant transformation, driven by government policies and advancements in technology. Many Indian companies are entering the healthcare market 
with the surge in biotech innovation playing a crucial role in the development of the country's healthcare landscape. Here's a closer look at this remarkable progress. The incredible visuals of robotic surgery demonstrations highlight the precision and innovation transforming healthcare in India. While healthcare professionals remain central to treatment, robotic surgery is emerging as a game changer, blending advanced technology with biological sciences to improve surgical outcomes. Across India, various biotech companies are contributing to this vital sector. Leading the charge is SS Innovations from Gurgaon, which has introduced cutting-edge surgical devices to India and other developing countries. This product truly is a make in India, completely indigenously designed, developed here by our team of young engineers in the country. It's all manufactured here. And so we literally created our Mantra 2 system in five months from the time we got into uh, this after we did the initial clinical trial. I think this was back in January of 21. And then uh, we Mantra 2 came into existence and in January of uh, this year, we had a very major global conference. And that time, uh, some of the doctors were asking, what's the next phase? So I did tell them that I'm going to create a very disruptive system. So literally within five months, we created Mantra 3 system. So this is what our latest version is. Biotechnology in India is a dynamic and rapidly evolving field with the potential to address key challenges in healthcare, agriculture, and environmental sustainability. Recognized as a sunrise sector, biotechnology is crucial to India's goal of growing its bioeconomy from 130 billion USD to 300 billion USD by 2030. Biotechnology startups are also driving this growth through a blend of innovation, government support, and a growing pool of skilled talent. I think this is an amazing time in the country right now. Biotech ecosystem was just growing and it's kind of in a, at a time when things are in the, what do you call, growth phase. The growth phase has to change to an exponential phase and to be able to do that, there are enormous challenges but tremendous opportunities as well. We have a very good ecosystem, we've got a lot of bioresource, we've got a lot of vaccine industry, biomanufacturing resource centers, and we also have a variety of ways in which we can actually train people who have been uh, across various disciplines. I would say uh, there are multifold factors. One is, I think, a very conducive government uh, policy. Um, so uh, I think government is also putting in a lot of effort in uh, uh, driving the startup culture here with the uh, favorable policies with a lot of uh, impetus uh, to uh, the uh, newly built up uh, startups. Uh, the other thing is I think the industry academy partnership which is also uh, on the rise in India and that is one of the key factors that we see a lot of startups coming up uh, in uh, the ecosystem. Um, so these are I would say the major factors that are contributing for a startup ecosystem here now. India played a key role in biotechnology during COVID-19 with its indigenous vaccine, Covaxin, which was exported to over 100 countries, including major recipients like Australia and the Netherlands. This underscored India's position as a leading vaccine manufacturer. The Indian government is also advancing biotechnology through initiatives like the BioE3 policy, biotechnology for economy, environment, and employment. As part of the GBT, we have actually shown a tremendous development in the past few years, starting from developing vaccines in the area of COVID uh, in our, our own institution, which is THSTI has helped develop a number of indigenously developed uh, COVID vaccines, in addition to some of the vaccines that are being made by the global organizations. The success of the Indian biotech industry relies on the growth of startups and advancements in research, both supported by an increase in biotech incubators. With its multidisciplinary approach, biotechnology can provide diverse solutions across health, agriculture, environment, energy, and industrial process. 
India's Navin Jammu and Kashmir is renowned not only for its breathtaking scenic beauty but also for its unique arts and crafts. From intricate wood carvings to world famous hand woven Pashmina shawls and exquisite papier mache creations, these crafts are hallmarks of the region's identity. They preserve traditions and provide livelihoods for local artisans. Join us on a journey into the vibrant world of Kashmiri arts. Meet 73 year old Gulam Navidar, a renowned artisan from Srinagar, celebrated for his stunning wood carvings on Kashmiri walnut. He skillfully depicts the region's natural beauty, its flowers, trees, and hills through his craftsmanship. Dar has elevated this art form by preserving and reinventing it, creating exquisite furniture, boxes, and decorative items that captivate onlookers. The intricate detailing of his work is a testament to his skilled hands. In recognition of his remarkable contributions, Ghulam Nabi Dar was awarded the National Award and the Padma Shri, India's fourth highest civilian award in 2024. He reflects emotionally on his challenging journey to success. जो जो पुराना उस कारीगर ने मुझे दे दिया है वो मैंने छोड़ दिया अब उनको मैंने चेंज किया है क्योंकि मैंने सोचा नहीं उससे अच्छा आप बनना चाहिए तो आज तक मैं अभी इसी कोशिश में चल रहा हूँ तो जब 2026 जनवरी आ गया इस साल का तो मेरे कोई जहन नहीं था मुझे अवार्ड मिलेगा या कोई अवार्ड मिलेगा कुछ भी नहीं था मैं सिर्फ अपने काम में लगा हुआ था उसके बाद क्या हुआ था सुबह को ऐलान हो गया कि गुलाम नबी डार को पद्मश्री अवार्ड मिल जाएगा मुझे तो और खुशी हो गई है वो जो मुसीबत मैंने उठाई है वो सारा भूल गया उस अवार्ड से मैंने सोचा कि अल्लाह ने मुझे बहुत कुछ मेरे बहुत दुख उठाई है इस काम को सीखने से Located in Srinagar, MENK produces a variety of Kashmiri shawls and scarves, with Pashmina shawls being the most popular and emblematic of the region. These shawls are handmade from the wool of Changtongin goats and require specialized skills. The most crucial part of the shawl making process is spinning, expertly done by Yasmina, a renowned artisan. She spins the fine and soft wool by hand on traditional spinning wheels, a delicate process that demands great skill. Yasmina has taught many women this traditional technique and has received an award for her efforts. Notably, one of her shawls was purchased by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. <laughs> कोई और था मेरे पास आई उसने कहा आप क्या बैठी हो घर में मैं कहती थी मगर ट्रेडिशनल लड़के पे मॉडर्न लड़के पे नहीं करती थी उसने कहा आप क्यों यहाँ बैठी हो जो हम वहाँ पे ट्रेनिंग देते हैं आप आप भी जाओ वहाँ पे फिर मैं यहाँ पे आई मैंने पंद्रह दिन की ट्रेनिंग की मैंने ये सीखा फिर मैं यहाँ पर टीचर लगी हाँ तब से लेके चार साल हो गए यहाँ पर इस दफ्तर को यहाँ पर स्टार्ट किए हुए मैंने बहुत सारी लेडीज़ को तैयार किया है बहुत सारी लेडीज़ आती है वो यहाँ पे सीख के जाती है ट्रेनिंग करके पंद्रह दिनों की बहुत सारे ऐसे औरतें हैं जिनके शौहर नहीं है हस्बैंड नहीं है बच्चे नहीं हैं डिप्रेशन में मुबतला हुई है लेकिन मैं उनको तसली देती हूँ हाँ ये काम कीजिए आप मॉडर्न टर्के पर इन बहुत फ़ायदा मिलेगा मैनी मैन ऑल्सो वर्क हीयर डिज़ाइनिंग वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ शॉल्स these shawls are so valuable that their prices can reach into the thousands of dollars. The products made here are exported worldwide. हम थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड ही एक्सपोर्ट करते हैं जो हमारा मेन ऑफिस जहां से हम एक्सपोर्ट करें वो दिल्ली से हम करते हैं जो हमारा यहां पर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग यूनिट है जहां से हम मैन्युफैक्चर कर रहे हैं और यहां के हम लोकल आर्टिजन से यहां से काम कराते हैं और मेन चीज़ हमारा ये है कि जो भी हमारा रियल आर्ट है वो हम अपने एंड कस्टमर को एक जेनवन प्रोडक्ट प्रोवाइड करना चाहते हैं famous for its beautiful decorative items. Originally called Mashikari, this art form arrived in Kashmir during the Mughal era. To create papier-mâché, old paper is soaked in water for several days, then mashed into a thick paste and shaped using molds. 
Once dried, the objects are polished with sandpaper, painted with a base color, and adorned with intricate traditional Kashmiri designs. This centuries-old craft is still embraced by many artisans, providing them with a decent income. Especially this art is known by the paper mache, which I told you already. And this is made of the paper. These all things are made, these objectives are made of the paper, paper palo. We put the paper in the bucket couple of days, 10 days, 15 days, then we mash the paper, grind the paper. Then we have the different kinds of molds in which we are making these you know, objectives. So after this dry, when it dry, we give this complete the polish and base the smoothness of this with the chalk powder and these all things. And the rest we are, later we are putting the tissue, better paper we are putting on this for the um, crack proof. So after it becomes the sandpaper and give the basic color of this. Then we go draw this all painting by hand. Across Jammu and Kashmir, millions of artisans engage in various crafts, earning a respectable livelihood through their skills. The government supports these artisans with various schemes that provide economic and technical assistance to further promote local art. Artisans um, Kashmir um, ki agar baat kare, um, Jammu Kashmir ki baat kare, to koi teen lakh asi hazar artisans hamare saath jude hue hain, jo registered hai with the department. उनको सपोर्ट करने का एक बहुत बड़ा मैंडेट है डिपार्टमेंट के पास और जो हमारी स्कीम्स है वो टारगेट करती हैं इन आर्टिसंस को इसकी वजह से जो है आज लोग फिर से क्राफ्ट की की तरफ जुड़ रहे हैं और इसका जो है आउटकम आउटकम ये है कि 2023-24 में हमारे एक्सपोर्ट्स डबल हुए these unique handicrafts of Kashmir symbolize centuries-old traditions that preserve the region's cultural heritage and provide vital livelihoods for its people. With government initiatives promoting these crafts, they're gaining recognition both nationally and internationally. Moving on, the magnificent Navratri festival in India came to a close with a vibrant celebration of Ravan the Hen. This year's festivities emphasized a message of communal harmony, showcasing more than just the impressive effigies of Ravan. In Agra, Muslim artisan Shabir Ahmed Faruqi skillfully crafted the effigies of Ravan, Kumkaran and Meghnath, showcasing the strength of cultural collaboration and unity. Take a look. Navratri, one of the most cherished festivals in India, concluded with the traditional Ravan Dehen on the Shera, a crucial part of the celebration. Amidst the festivity, an inspiring story unfolded behind the scenes, serving as a testament to creativity and the spirit of community. A Muslim artisan Shabir Ahmed Faruqi meticulously crafted the effigies of Ravan, Kumbhkaran and Meghnath, the key figures of the Hindu epic the Ramayana. For decades, Shabi's family has been perfecting the art of creating intricate effigies, a tradition that has become a cherished legacy passed down through generations. Their craftsmanship brings to life the iconic figures of the Dashera festivities, symbolizing the triumph of good over evil. This अभी पंद्रह लोग हैं अभी तो अब समय तो हमारा वैसे एक महीने का रहता है यहाँ मगर हम रात और दिन काम कर रहे हैं सब लोग चार पांच बजे जाते सुबह दो घंटे मुश्किल से नींद ले पाते वापस फिर काम शुरू कर देते for Shabir, it's a matter of pride that his family has been trusted with the responsibility of creating effigies for generations. His father and grandfather before him were engaged in the same craft and over the years they have developed a unique style admired not only in Ajmer but across the region. By continuing this tradition, Shabir shows how art transcends religious boundaries promoting communal harmony. His family's story is not just about making effigies but also about preserving a tradition that unites people from different faiths. Although Dashera is a Hindu festival, Shabir sees his work as a contribution to India's rich cultural heritage.
Now let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Francesco Baniaia secured his eighth win of the season at the Japanese Grand Prix in Motegi on October 6, cutting his championship gap to George Martin to just 10 points. The Ducati rider who dominated practice and won the sprint race held off Martin for 20 laps to claim victory. Martin, starting 11th after a qualifying crash, finished second, bringing his total to 392 points, while Baniaia is close behind with 382. Mark Marquez completed the podium in third. In Moto2, Manuel Gonzalez claimed his first victory with I. Ogura and Phillips Halleck finishing second and third respectively. In Moto3, David Alonso made history as the first Colombian world champion after his 10th win of the season. India is a land of diverse landscapes, cultures and rich history making it an attractive tourism destination for global travellers. And with record-breaking international arrivals, the country is now showcasing its hidden tourist destinations to visitors. Today, we invite you to explore the hidden gems of India's Jharkhand state, which is quickly gaining recognition among both local and international travellers. Steeped in the vibrant symphony of nature, Jharkhand is blossoming into a hub for spiritual and ecotourism. Once overlooked, the state now offers a wide range of destinations that immerse travelers in its beauty. From the breathtaking U-shaped valleys of Patratu and the scenic water resorts of Ramgar to the tranquil sunset points of Nitarhat, these sites provide a thrilling escape into nature. Additionally, the stunning Hundru Falls and the serene Jonha Falls are becoming popular picnic spots, with local authorities investing in infrastructure and safety to enhance the visitor experience. I have been here for a long time. I have been here for a long time. I have been here এর আগে দুবার এসেছি এই নিয়ে আমার এটা হচ্ছে তিনবার তো এটা তো আপনারা দেখতেই পাচ্ছেন এর আগে আমরা যে দুবার এসেছি তখন হচ্ছে গ্রীষ্মকালে এসেছিলাম এবং সেই সময় জলের পরিমাণটা খুব কম ছিল তো এইবারে আসা মূলত এই বর্ষার সময় এই জোনা ফলসের ভয়ঙ্কর রূপটাই আমরা হচ্ছে উপলব্ধি করতে চেয়েছি as these destinations attract tourists, they also provide a vital source of income and livelihood for many tribal artisans who sell handmade crafts. हम लोग ऐसे और लोग भी बनाते हैं, लेकिन अभी भीड़ थोड़ी कम होती है, इसलिए अभी एक दो लोग ही बनाते हैं। और जैसे दिसंबर जनवरी हो गया, तो आपको 10 या 15 आदमी बनाते हुए दिखेंगे यहाँ पर। Jharkhand is rich in historical sites, including ancient temples and tribal villages, which offer visitors a glimpse into its vibrant history. The ancient Ratu Fort and picturesque Tagore Hill in the bustling city of Ranchi stand as living testaments to this heritage. As travelers seek authentic experiences, improved road and rail connectivity, along with better infrastructure, promise unforgettable adventures and a deeper connection to the essence of rural India. In recent years, Jharkhand has experienced a steady increase in tourist footfall. There are some identified destinations that we have identified, like Netarhat, Baba Baitna Dham and Patratu Lake Resort. Plus Chandil Dam. So these are the locations. These are all our Ministry of Tourism. We have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have tried to develop some schemes under which we have Efforts are underway to provide unforgettable experiences for foreign travellers. 
A prime example is the Palace on Wheels, a luxury train offering a week-long journey through northwestern Rajasthan. Launched by Indian Railways and the Rajasthan Tourism Development Corporation, this journey showcases the state's rich heritage, art and culture. India's first luxury train, the Palace on Wheels, has embarked on its inaugural journey of the season from New Delhi. Launched in 1982, this opulent train operates from September to April, traveling from New Delhi to the enchanting landscapes of Rajasthan. With 14 elegantly designed coaches and 41 sumptuous cabins, it accommodates up to 80 guests. Travelers aboard the Palace on Wheels indulge in luxury amenities surrounded by interiors adorned with royal decor, each named after various locations in Rajasthan reflecting the state's rich history and cultural lineage. This train is for Rajasthan, a landmark for Rajasthan. And people from very far, from different countries, come to this train. You are seeing that this train is looking at a new way. We are where we are, the rest of us. This is the Shish Mahal. And the Rajasthan is an art and culture and heritage. India offers an unparalleled travel experience that captivates visitors with its rich tapestry of diverse cuisines, hidden gems waiting to be explored, and a vibrant cultural heritage. From the aromatic spices of street food to the tranquility of untouched landscapes, every journey in India is a feast for the senses. Each visitor leaves with unforgettable memories, having immersed themselves in the enchanting mosaic of traditions and flavors that define this incredible country. India truly has many untapped tourist destinations for visitors to explore. And with that, we wrap up today's episode of My India. We will see you next week at the same time. Till then, goodbye and take care.